A Sarasota woman still missing six years after her disappearance. Investigators aren't giving up hope after receiving a tip in the case. Something you look forward to every year. And we'll take you to a local Christmas tradition that is soon to end. Your Suncoast News starts now. You're watching ABC 7 News at 11. Good evening. Topping our news, a Sarasota woman is still missing six years after her disappearance. Investigators are not giving up hope after receiving a tip in the case. Patricia Scala, known as Erin to her friends and family, was living on Vanna Drive before her disappearance in 2012. Detectives interviewed dozens of friends, associates and neighbors between 2012 and 2017, but their search came up short. This past September, someone close to Scala told investigators that they believed the 27 year old was killed and her remains were somewhere on the property where she lived. Detectives searched that property but did not find any evidence. I have been optimistic for the last four and a half years, but when some tips started coming in slowly here and there, then I started losing that hope, which is sad. Investigators are now asking for your help with this search. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers. We have an update now on a shooting in Palmetto that happened last week. 77 year old William Andrus is still in jail for allegedly assaulting his neighbors over an argument about an air conditioner. Deputies say at some point Andrus pulled out a pistol and fired several shots at his neighbor Joseph Prisco. Joseph Prisco's wife Brenda says he also hit her with a brick. Andrus is being charged with attempted murder. There's no word on the condition of those two victims. A Charlotte County man accused of drowning a sheriff's canine is now behind bars. Deputies say Matthew Johnson has been on the run from authorities for almost three weeks. He was a suspect in a robbery at a 7-Eleven in Port Charlotte. Last Sunday, deputies got a tip about his whereabouts, and as he was running away, canine Sparta caught him. But Johnson dragged that canine into a nearby canal and started drowning him so he could swim away. Johnson is now facing several charges, including theft and offenses against a police dog. Meanwhile, detectives in Charlotte County are trying to identify the man in this video wearing the black shirt and hat. In this surveillance video, you can see him picking something up from the shelf and walking away without paying for it. If you have any information about his identity, you're being asked to call Crime Stoppers. And here's also a reminder to always keep your eyes on your belongings at the airport. The man in these surveillance photos is accused of stealing luggage at the Southwest Florida International Airport in Fort Myers. You can see he pulled them off of the carousel and then ran with them to a car that was waiting outside. If you recognize this man or the car in those pictures, you're being asked to call police. Well, we have new numbers tonight of exactly how much damage Hurricane Michael did across Florida. Authorities announcing today the death toll now climbing to 43. The Florida Division of Emergency Management says more than 11 counties in North Florida had at least one fatality. The one with the most, though, was Bay County with 23 deaths. Michael slammed Florida's panhandle last month and people who live there are still slowly recovering. However, this is the final week of the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season. The season began on June 1st and was relatively calm for Florida until Michael made landfall on October 10th as a Category 4 storm in the Panhandle. The storm caused massive damage around Mexico Beach, tearing apart homes, snapping trees and knocking out power as it barreled towards Georgia. That storm resulted in about three and a half a billion dollars in insured losses. Now we'll discuss how this year's hurricane season compared to previous years on Thursday right here on ABC 7 at 7 with our very own Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. And speaking of Bob, let's check in now with him with a look at our forecast, Bob. Well, we'll be transitioning away from hurricanes and tropical systems to cold fronts, and we have one now that is uh, through our area. The cold front itself has moved on down south now, and uh, behind it, the winds have shifted. Now, we're still getting some rainfall. It's very light now, and it's still out there in the Gulf of Mexico, but the big story 
is the big chill that will be taking place at least for the next couple of days. We'll start to warm back up by Friday afternoon, but right now some showers around still light in nature across parts of Lombok Key, Anna Maria Island and off into the Gulf of Mexico. You can tell the uh, front is through by the wind shift change. It's out of the northwest now and the winds are going to pick up throughout the day tomorrow. We're talking winds sustained up to 20 miles an hour, 25 at times and gusts as high as 30 out of the northwest, anywhere from uh, basically 10 to 15 miles an hour to the north of us now and now out of eight out of the west northwest into Venice. So here are the headlines. A few showers still possible during the early morning hours of a turning cooler will start off tomorrow. Windy and cool on Tuesday. High temperatures only into the mid 60s and then wind chills could be into the 30s on Wednesday morning as lows are expected into the mid 40s with a strong wind and it looks like Wednesday will be the coldest day uh, throughout this week as we are expecting highs only in the low 60s on that day. Currently, though, it's uh, still pretty mild out there, 68 degrees. We have some clouds and the wind shift change and the pressure is starting to rise somewhat. Well, more on our forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Jacqueline. All right, Bob, thank you. And first alert traffic, you can expect detours and delays at a busy intersection in Manatee County for the next several weeks. The intersection of 51st Street West and 21st Avenue West will be closed for construction. Starting tomorrow, the west side of 21st Avenue West will be closed for the next three weeks. 51st Street West will remain open heading north and southbound tomorrow, but it will also be closed starting on Wednesday. Well, if you live in Venice, there's a planned water outage scheduled for tomorrow that you need to be aware of. That starts from 8 a.m. and goes until 4 p.m. to repair a water main. The areas affected are listed on your screen. You're being asked to boil water for consumption only for 72 hours until that boil water advisory has been lifted. For more information, you can head over to the city's website, www.venicegov.com, or you can call the Venice Utilities Department. An update tonight on several projects happening in Palmetto. At a city meeting this evening, officials discussed the ongoing project involving the Green Bridge. One of two southbound lanes remains closed on that bridge. The contractor hopes to have both lanes open by the end of this year. Also, a new pool coming to the city of Palmetto's Lincoln Park is still in the planning phases. The city and county are working to schedule a meeting in January to discuss the design and pool details. And finally, the city of Palmetto is finalizing requests for a new police department. They expect the design portion of this project will be put out to bid in the next several weeks. Well, for many, the day after Thanksgiving signals the green light to start putting up Christmas decorations. But one man in Sarasota spends all year working on his, and he says crowds of up to 500 people come to the Sarah Lake Estates neighborhood just to witness it. ABC 7's Jackie Kelly is live there now. Now, Jackie, you spoke to the owner of that house. What can people expect when they come out? Jacqueline, that's right. This is unlike any other holiday display. Everything here behind me is handmade by the man that lives inside. He's created things like Santa's workshop, a carousel, and a castle is his newest creation. But he says that this year will be the last year that everything here will be on display. Nestled in Sarah Lake Estates lies a Christmas village full of homemade buildings something you look forward to every year. 87 year old Neil Miller says he's been making these buildings for over 60 years. Each year he thinks of a new place around the world he wants to recreate and uses vinyl concrete to do so. And much like a Christmas elf, he says he starts creating his masterpieces right when the display gets taken down on New Year's Day. I've always started right after Christmas, making my things, planning, where everything was going to go. Miller says he isn't quite sure how much time he spends building the houses, but it takes up most of his days. Oh, I don't keep track of time. I just get up before the sun is up, usually, and I'm out there making my little houses. And many neighbors say they admire his hard work. I've been in construction for, for 48 years, and I wouldn't know how to make a house out of concrete <laughs> like they are. So it's uh, it's very unique. The Christmas display has become a holiday tradition for people in Miller's neighborhood. I get them to smile and they like to, and they forget about the worldly troubles. And it, it's just a little makes people feel at, at ease. 
Now Miller says this is his last year because of his age, but once everything in this display is taken down on New Year's Day, he's going to put everything up for sale. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jackie Kelly, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, Jackie looks beautiful. Well, stay with us. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. Plus, we'll show you the pros and cons to the different treatments that are supposed to cure migraines. And a new proposed law to ban texting and driving in the Sunshine State could go before lawmakers this year. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How do you not love him? Our overall experience working with California Closets was phenomenal. Calm, reassuring. Through happenstance, we ended up paired with our designer, Jen. She was someone who not only was patient, someone who was professional. She's become extended family. She had great insight to help direct me towards those things that could make our <laughs> dreams come true. We are the Greens, and this is our California Closet story. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Find out first at 4 with ABC 7 News at 4, weekdays on ABC 7. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. At 11, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort has breached his plea agreement. That's according to a new court filing released today. It says Manafort lied to both the FBI and special counsel Robert Mueller's office. Manafort, however, denies that. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy and witness tampering in September. But as part of his plea deal, prosecutors dropped 10 other charges as long as Manafort cooperated. The prosecutors may be able to bring those charges back if that cooperation is not deemed successful. Well, another child has now died in Florida from a flu-related illness. Health officials not announcing exactly where in Florida the child lived, but this marks the second to die here in the Sunshine State. Multiple news outlets are reporting the child was not vaccinated. We are in week 46 of flu season and a total of 24 outbreaks have been reported so far. Six of those in the last week. The Department of Health urges people who have not yet been vaccinated to do so as soon as possible. 
A proposal that would allow law enforcement officers to pull over drivers for using cell phones while driving will be back before lawmakers in 2019. A measure called the Florida Ban on Wireless Communications Devices While Driving Law would prohibit texting, reading data, or talking on cell phones while behind the wheel. Currently, drivers can only be cited in Florida if they are stopped for other infractions, such as running a stop sign or speeding. Well, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan joins us now, and Bob, we should find our coats if we if you haven't yeah, already. I think so, absolutely. Uh, tomorrow's going to be cool, but uh, I think Wednesday will be the coldest day of them all, with temperatures only in the low 60s for mm -hmm. highs. Uh, that's so Florida cold, right? right? It's not too bad. It's bearable. <laughs> Uh, compared to what they've had already over the Northeast and throughout the Great Lakes. A beautiful photo despite the clouds and showers that were around. This one from Anna Maria. Uh, Rob getting this uh, gorgeous sunset. Uh, appreciate that. And you can see the rainfall still out there in places, but not a lot, not very heavy. So expect some light rainfall overnight. And it looks as though we'll see that rain clear out of here just in time for drop off tomorrow for school. Should not be a problem. It should not be an issue as far as any rain goes tomorrow. We will see an issue though with temperatures uh, hanging right about where the low is tomorrow and then staying that way throughout most of the day. It's one of those days the temperature is not going to warm up much uh, due to that strong north to northwest wind. And it's going to be a very windy day, especially in the afternoon and evening when winds will pick up up to about 20 miles an hour, gusts as high as 30, I believe. Right now that light rain occurring throughout Manatee County, also uh, near Siesta Key and south. You can see the rainfall estimates. Not a lot of heavy rainfall, but uh, some areas picking up to a quarter of an inch. Had a report from a viewer in Venice. They had a quarter of an inch there, and uh, we are looking at uh, not much chance for rain for the rest of the work week, but then the weekend could be a little different. Temperatures already, you can see that cold air, 44 degrees in Pensacola, 45 in Tallahassee, and 51 in Jacksonville. That's where the uh, colder and drier air has settled in so far. That'll be moving in our direction throughout the early morning hours. Right now, it's not too bad out there temperature-wise. Into the upper 60s, the Gulf water temperature at 75. Northport, you're at 70. You had some rain earlier today. That uh, rain is still possible, as I said, overnight. Dew point temperatures really tell the story, too. Uh, dew point temperatures all into the 30s now over the panhandle. We're still into the mid-60s here. So we have another reinforcing shot of drier air and cooler air. Uh, settling in despite the fact our winds have switched around to a northwesterly direction indicating that that uh, cold front has passed uh, breezy and cool tomorrow high temperatures only around 65 degrees we'll see some clouds around tomorrow morning those low stratocumulus clouds due to that colder air moving over the warmer waters of the gulf of mexico uh, by tuesday afternoon we'll top out at 64 our lows tonight will be right around 60 degrees to start things off and then uh, looks like uh, we go through Wednesday morning. Well, temperatures into the mid 40s and with a north wind at that point at around 10 to 15 on Wednesday morning, it could feel more like in the 30s at that point and then we'll only warm to around 60 degrees for a high on Wednesday. So yes, indeed for Florida standards, that is a uh, pretty chilly forecast uh, this early in the season. 69 right now, humidity at 90%. The winds have switched to the northwest at 7. The high today, you can say goodbye to the 80s for a while. We were at 81. Uh, we'll be back to that 81 degree reading, I think, as early as Saturday, though. Nationally, what's happening? Well, that cold air is over the uh, Great Lakes now into the 20s and 30s there in Detroit and Columbus, uh, but 11 in Bismarck, 26 in Rapid City, and 20 in Omaha, 35 in Oklahoma City. So you can see uh, temperatures are pretty cold across most of the U.S. Even in Atlanta right now, it's 28 degrees there and 34 in Macon. The highs tomorrow will warm into the 20s across much of the upper Mississippi Valley, Minneapolis 24, a little bit warmer in uh, New York and in the nation's capital at 45 degrees. Atlanta gets up to only 42. That massive winter storm is still uh, taking shape and still causing problems from Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, but it's mainly rainfall now in New York, and uh, we have still some winter watches and advisories up for parts of the Northeast, but not nearly as many as we saw just 24 hours ago. So much cooler tomorrow. Mid 60s, a small craft advisory is in effect. Strong winds out of the northwest. Windy and cold on Wednesday. Highs only in the low 60s, but notice uh, we'll start off pretty chilly Friday morning. We'll warm to 77 and then warmer still with a chance for showers, especially late Saturday and into early Sunday. Jacqueline? All right, Bob, thank you. At 6 p.m., we brought you part one of our series that explores the many ways of treating one of the leading diseases in the country. New at 11, ABC's 7's Taylor Torregano brings us part two, taking a deeper dive inside the new age healing methods, as well as the evolution of the more traditional method of treating migraines. 
It's absolutely changed my life. Shelby Isaacson used to have debilitating migraines nearly every day. One could have killed her. And I got a pain in the side of my head, and the next thing I knew, I was hitting the curb. So I'd actually passed out while driving with a four-year-old in the back seat. That was just the beginning, but one day, she couldn't take it anymore. And that's where I started doing my own research and seeing that CBD, or full spectrum hemp products like we have here at Second and Seed, were helping people with epilepsy. And I figured I had you know, a shot to take, let's go see what happens. Within a month, I was off of my anti-epileptics, my muscle relaxers, and my anxiety was in check for the first time in my whole life. It was a discovery Isaacson felt so strongly about, she quit her job and partnered with a friend to spread the healing. The CBD and the hemp products are actually um, causing your body to go into a homeostasis. So it's helping with the inflammation of a tension headache. It's helping to calm the anxiety, all those things that are the triggers. It ultimately doesn't heal your body, but it helps it regulate itself so that you don't get to the point where you're having those migraines. But is it marijuana? It's actually like the decaffeinated cousin. So how I like to explain it is that marijuana is grown to be high THC, low CBD. Hemp is exact opposite, high CBD, low THC. Our products here at our store are tested three different times, so we know how much is in each product. Cannabis is the parent plant of both, but Isaacson says for CBD, it can be taken in many forms, you don't need a prescription, and you can go about your day without feeling loopy, tired, and unfocused. A lot of these people have lost hope, and this is the hope and the recognition to realize that maybe everything we were told before about hemp and uh, medicinal marijuana is not completely true. The most traditional treatment for migraines continue to evolve as well. About 30% of patients in neurology clinic have migraine, and that's what we see and treat. Dr. Kara says first, a neurologist will take an in-depth history of the patient, then a physical exam to form a treatment plan. And depending on whether it's a chronic migraine, a very frequent migraine versus an acute episodic migraine, the treatments are a little bit different, and so we try to tailor it to each patient. The doctors at Sarasota Memorial Hospital say there are more than 30 different classes of medications to treat migraines, and that number only continues to grow. There are about three new, new class medications called CGRP antagonists that just came out this year. Uh, CGRP is a molecule uh, produced by the brain that can actually increase pain, and so these, these medications target that molecule and in doing so actually reduce migraine pain. But even with these advancements, Dr. Kara says most doctors are open to the many alternatives any patient may want to try as well. I like to tailor it to each patient. There's no one algorithm for every patient. And so that's why coming in and seeing a neurologist, sitting down, talking to them, getting an examination, it's very important to deciding what to tr how to treat and what to treat with. I'm reporting from Sarasota, Taylor Torgano, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Well, for more information on these numerous treatments and where you can go to try them, we have a link on our website. Just visit mysuncoast.com and search for this story. Consumer News is next, but first, here's what's coming up on Jimmy Kimmel. Are we all clear tonight? We are green to go. Roger. It's former First Lady Michelle Obama. Do you have a secret like Instagram? If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret. <laughs> Plus, from Disney's Mary Poppins Returns, Lynn manuel Miranda. Kimmel, tonight on ABC. Ready to open up new opportunities as an electrician? Don't do it yourself. Team up with Mr. Sparky instead. We're locally owned and looking for people like you. We offer our electricians great perks that you just won't get going it alone. And whether you're an apprentice, a master electrician, or somewhere in between, we have a spot for you. Best decision I ever made. Apply online or call today. You don't have to put up with any malarkey. Call 888. Sparky. Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit mysuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by Batteries Plus, the Florida Lottery, and Sarasota Glass and Mirror. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. 
They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. When ABC7 declares a first alert weather day, it means we can expect major changes to weather conditions here along the Sun Coast. It means it could be severe, potentially dangerous weather ahead. We tell you when a first alert weather day is coming because we want you to be prepared. A first alert weather day is an advanced warning. We'll let you know about any changes in the weather when the first signs appear. ABC7 first alert weather, we're here for you. Sometimes one moment changes everything. One song, one game, one adventure, one mission for a child battling a critical illness. A wish come true can be a turning point. You can transform lives one wish at a time. Visit Make-A-Wish online to help grant more life-changing wishes. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. Floridians give billions of dollars to thousands of charitable organizations each year, but where is that money really going? The holiday season is the best time of year for charities to raise money. However, it can be tough to tell which organizations actually use the money for the services they advertise versus those that mainly spend donations on salaries and overhead and others still that are just outright scams. Attorney General Pam Bondi has released her office's 2018 Holiday Consumer Protection Guide with various tips on how to determine whether a charity is legitimate or not. You see so much good during the holidays, so much good, but you also see people trying to take advantage of others. So just be really careful if someone calls you and asks you to donate um, to a certain charity. Just check it out first. Remember that it is much easier to avoid bogus charities up front rather than attempting to get your money back later after you've been scammed. And since tomorrow is Giving Tuesday, we want to make sure you follow these tips to make sure you're not getting scammed when you are trying to do good. First, check a charity before donating. Also, watch out for scams. Scammers often take advantage of people by pretending, pretending to be a fake charity. And keep some good records. Always keep a printed copy of a donation or a receipt. To find a charity that you want to donate to that's participating in Giving Tuesday, look for this story on our website, mysuncoast.com. And the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is hosting its second annual holiday toy drive starting this Saturday, December 1st. There are currently more than 1,500 children throughout Sarasota, Manatee, and Charlotte counties who have been removed from their homes due to abuse or neglect. Because the children range in age from newborn to 18 years old with varying personal needs, the Sheriff's Office has chosen to focus the holiday initiative solely on toys and gift cards. For more information on where you can deliver those donations, also head over to mysuncoast.com. We have plenty of information there to help you. That's a look at consumer news. We'll have your winning lotto numbers when we come back. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Investigate TV tackles the tough topics. What happened to my life was awful. When your health is compromised, we investigate. They are really drug dealers and in white coats. Corporate greed exposed. How do you trust them to run this program? The powerful held accountable with in-depth journalism led by award-winning journalist Lee Zurich. We're your watchdog. Search Investigate TV on your Roku device. Download it now. America was built on a love for the outdoors. We are a nation of sportsmen, blessed with magnificent natural resources. 
with broad interests across water and field, we are united in our devotion to nature and conservation. Join us every week for the best shows celebrating the outdoor lifestyle. Outdoor America. Live free. This weekend on the ABC7 live stream. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. Watch ABC7 wherever you are. Just search ABC7 on your streaming device to keep up with the Sun Coast from the comfort of your couch. Download ABC7 now to watch us on TV anytime you want. ABC7, we're here for you wherever you are. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Looking ahead to this Saturday, a rare treat for art fans. The Whimsyland House in Safety Harbor will be open, open for public tours. Created by two artists, this home has been in wor a work in progress for more than 30 years. Tours are open this Saturday from 10 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon for a small donation ranging from 10 to $15. Looks pretty interesting there. That's right, it does. A lot of things happening. Yeah. Obviously, the month of December, yes. a lot of folks coming back. And we also have a couple of parades taking place. We have the Boat Parade in Venice, mm -hmm. and that's going to be on Saturday night. Also, Sarasota Holiday Parade as well, Saturday yeah, night. There's a that. chance for showers. Hopefully, the rain stays away. Oh, goodness. All right. Thank you so much, Bob. And thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Have a good one.